What's up, y'all? It's me, it's your boy, Asmin Gold, and today I'm going to be showing you guys all of the different artifact weapons that are going to be available in Legion. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what artifact weapons are or how they're supposed to work, I'm going to briefly explain them just so we're on the same page whenever we're going through the list here. Now, in Legion, there are going to be no weapon drops, and so that means at the beginning of the expansion, you're going to get a quest that's probably going to be within like one or two hours of starting out in the Broken Isles. You're going to get this quest that's going to lead you to your artifact weapon, you're going to take that weapon with you for the entire duration of the expansion. Expansion. and you're going to be leveling this weapon up you're going to be putting talent points in this weapon you're going to be doing all kinds of stuff it's going to function as a really strong form of solo player progression character progression i think it's going to be great now not only does each class get its own unique artifact weapon but each spec does and so that means that there are going to be 36 unique artifact weapons available in legion and um there's going to be obviously three for each different uh class and four for druids and only two for demon hunters because they only have two uh, uh two specs now all also another thing, if you don't like the way one of your artifact weapons looks, there are going to be a number of different skins that you can apply to your artifact weapon, I believe, in your class hall, and it's going to make your weapon look pretty much entirely different. I think it's always going to have kind of the same base, basically like base theme, but it will look uh, very, very different from an ri the original version. And so if you don't like the way it looks, there are going to be a number of other, uh, I guess like uh, skins that you can apply to it as well as also uh, you can transmog it to other weapons from previous expansions and so if you don't like the way one of these looks don't worry about it you can always change it later on now first one we're going to be looking at and by the way I'm just reading these off um, from the uh, the blizzard uh, was it the uh, the le the class features in uh, in the artifacts section and so uh, I'm gonna have a link to it in the video description so if you guys don't really want to go through the whole video you just want to go through this at your own pace uh, you can do that as well but I'm gonna just go through them with you guys show you guys pretty much what's going on maybe give a little bit of commentary at the same time so first one, let's go ahead and look at the death knight ones i love gothic shit so let's start out with this one also it's conveniently at the top of the page so let's go ahead and blood death knights are going to be getting the maw of the damned an ancient legion axe forged from a metal that drains its victims vital energies how cool would it be if it had life steal on it hopefully it does that would be amazing the soul of its original creator is trapped within and cursed with unending hunger for more than a thousand years, that's a long time, an old cunning Morag uh, has used the axe to butcher uprisings and consume the life force of the Legion's foes. Over the over its long and infamous history, infamous, I've actually never heard of this before, the weapon has made its demonic bearer extraordinarily powerful. And so that's great because you're the demonic bearer. And so the next one here uh, is uh, the, for Frost spec. Um, now Frost, I don't really know if you're going to be able to combine these to uh, do two-handed Frost or anything like that. Uh, my understanding and expectation is you're probably not going to be able to. And Frost is going to be a dual-wield only spec. Uh, it's going to be Light Bring Ice Bringer, sorry, um, uh, not not Game of Thrones here. Uh, Ice Bringer and Frost Reaper, which should be capitalized, but it's not. Blades of the Fallen Prince, and uh, obviously, if you guys might not have realized already, these are going to be forged from the. Um, the shards of Frostmourne, just like Shadowmourne, crafted by the Burning Legion to corrupt the world of Azeroth, the soul-stealing runeblade Frostmourne was shattered by Ashbringer atop Icecrown Citadel. Countless souls were freed from the broken blade, but others were not so fortunate. Today, the shards of Frostmourne can be recrafted and infused with even more power. However, the spirits will still be trapped within... Uh, sorry, the spirits still trapped within must first be subdued and bent to the wielder's will. I, I like that. You're going to be beating up some spirits at the same time. You know, a little bit of double jeopardy. They're already stuck in a sword and you're going to beat them up a little bit more. Unholy, you get Apocalypse. See, that's the kind of name that I like to see. And it looks really cool, too. Vampiric demons known as the Nazrium. By the way, Nazrium, they're like the, um, the, the dread lords, like uh, Valthamirus, Tychondrius, uh, uh, Malganus, uh, you know, a bunch of other ones. Like, oh, they got little horns. Like, is he somebody like this? Might be a Nazrium. Okay. Anyway, vampiric demons, known as the Nazrium, forge this ancient sword, which brings it to, with violence, plagues, and death. I like that. Um, the Apocalypse soon earned a horrific, horrific uh, reputation in the hands of a Triscard mage who couldn't... Why does he have a mage? Did he give it to a death knight? Okay. Well, forget about that. Who couldn't control its destructive energies. In, t in time, the sword was seized by the malevolent uh, Dark Riders, the servants of Medivh. The corrupted guardian of Trisfall, they hid the blade in the catacombs under his home, the Tower of Kyrzen. So maybe we might be going in there. I know uh, 
as from Heel vs. Babyface, just showed you guys a video recently on how to get into the crypts in Karazhan. There's a bunch of cool, crazy, weird shit in there, and so uh, if you're interested in like exploration, I might recommend for you guys to check that out. Now let's go to the next one, Demon Hunter. Uh, the Demon Hunter weapons, uh, these are going to be pretty cool too. Uh, so there are the two specs for Demon Hunters. is Havoc is the uh, DPS spec, Vengeance is the tank spec. Okay, uh, Havoc, uh, you get the Twin Blades of the Deceiver. These are not, I don't think these are going to kill Jaden's blades. Uh, these, bla these glaives belong to the former Demon Hunter Verindus Felsol. Once a member of the Illidari and a sworn enemy of the Burning Crusade, he was slain at the Black Temple. At the Legion's, after the Legion's leader killed Jaden, well, I thought it was Sargeras. Uh, re revived him, and in, in the Twisting Nether, Verindus surrendered to the demon within him, forsaking his mortality. In in the process, he and his glaives were infused with great power by Kil'jaeden's Iridar allies. And so that's kind of odd. I wonder how you get them if they're in the Twisting Nether. Vengeance, you get the uh, Aldrachi uh, Warblades. I was reading about this before I actually started the video. In Agents Pass, this is cool, by the way, the Dark Titan Sargeras offered the mighty Aldrachi people, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, probably not, uh, a place in his burning legion, but the Aldrachi pro proved incorruptible. They slew innumerable demons before their race was wiped out. Sargeras personally killed their greatest champion and seized his weapons. Much later, a demon hunter willingly became the servant of Sargeras' lieutenant, Kill Jaden. I thought he was just a leader up above. Uh, pleased, Kill Jaden bestowed the war blades on her, the, and sorry that that she might wield a portion of the Aldrachi's bygone might and devastate the mortals of Azeroth with it. And so it's it's like this glaive, and it's got like kind of a little uh, little shield on it at the same time. I think that's a pretty cool little touch. Let's take a look at the druid stuff. Get some uh, some branches and trees in here. Now we got four different ones because of course you've got feral and guardian. So balance is the scythe of Loon. I mean I don't know about you guys, but I think like a scythe doesn't really seem like a very druidic thing to have. Uh, I guess I mean like. Uh, Okay, whatever. A uh, Scythe of a Loon. This mystical artifact was created millennia ago by the staff of a loon and a fang from the wolf demigod Goldrin. You remember, guys, uh, you saved him in Hyjal. Uh, this is just a wolf, right? Uh, but he's big. He's real big because he's a demigod. Um, the Scythe of a Loon carries a long and unsettling history for the druids. Those who are not careful enough can easily be overwhelmed by Goldrin spirit, which infuses the Scythe. How cool would it be if it turned into a wolf? I mean, druids have already got like 10 other things they can do. I think, no, no, only shamans can be wolves. Tied to its origin of the Wargrin on Azeroth, the Scythe is said to possess untold lunar power for the druid with balance enough to keep control. Balance, see, looks see that, that name? That's because that's the spec that you play it as. Uh, or you have it as. Feral gets the uh, the fangs of Ashmane. Ashmane, I'm not sure. The massive Grey Panther. Ashmane, one of the first wild gods. One, was the, one of the many to answer the call of the demigod Cenarius and defend the world of Azeroth during the War of the Ancients. She fell in battle against the Legion, but saved countless lives in the process. A great shrine was built in her honor in Va Val Shura, and her fangs were adorned to put on display there. It was said they still carry much of her power. Well, let's hope so, because those are going to be the feral uh, blades, and like so feral is going to be dual wield now. Uh, I'm not sure how that's going to work with transmog, but this is also going to change your cat form and so like you guys can see a little picture this little uh a little vicious little blue uh, blue white cat probably got like 20 different spikes on him watch out for him he'll poke you no matter wherever you try and hit him from guardian is getting the claws of earth sock you guys remember that he's in uh uh, Grizzly Hills, and you gotta save him or you gotta protect him, something like that. He's a bear, by the way. It kind of makes sense because Guardian is a bear, too. I, I bet they planned that. Forged from Titan Steel by the Titanic Watcher Keeper Freya, these claws were her gift to the Great Bear God, or Great Bear Ursoc, one of the Wild Gods. He wielded the claws in countless battles until his death during the War of the Ancients. Although his body faded away, the claws remained, and the legends legends say a fragment of his spirit lingered within them. After wrestling uh, the claws away from Ursoc's Furbolg followers, a band of druids, I bet you're in that band of druids, um, took that took the claws to the Emerald Dream, sought out Ursoc's spirit, and returned the claws to him for safekeeping. Hey, you guys see that? You a fire bear now. You're going to get a fire... Oh my god, that looks so cool. I'm like, oh, my druid already is level 100. Oh man, I can't wait to get those. That's going to be awesome. Resto is going to be getting Gahanir. That's a weird name. That's probably the weirdest one so far. I, I mean, it's probably one of dumb with a couple of them. It's going to probably get even worse than that. 
Um, Gehamir, the mother tree. This is a single branch taken from Gehanir. Jeez, uh, I feel like an idiot because I, I know I'm messing that up. Gehanir, maybe. I don't know. Uh, the first tree which was gifted to the mortal druids by the demigod Aviana long ago. Its connection to the mystical Emerald Dream serves as a healing and stabilizing influence on the world of Azeroth. In recent times, druids have used this staff to hold back the corruption and madness of the Nightmare. As a result, satyrs within the Nightmare are desperate to see Gehanir destroyed. By the way, uh, you're going to be going into the Emerald Dream. It's going to be one of the first raids in Legion, and so maybe that might have some uh, some tie-ins to that. It'd be really, really cool. Next, we'll go ahead and take a look at the Hunter stuff, different bows. Uh, one thing that's really cool about Hunters now, if you guys didn't know, uh, Survival Hunters are no longer ranged. They uh, have a... Um, they have a melee weapon, and so, um, you know, like a melee hunter, it used to always be a joke, right? Well, now... It's not actually a joke, which is kind of crazy. It's almost a joke in itself. So first one, uh, Beastmasters get Titan Strike. And also um, another thing is Marksmen's, uh, Marksman Hunters don't have a pet. Beastmasters have a pet. And uh, uh, obviously the uh, Survival Hunters only have a melee weapon. They have a Titan Strike, a peerless example of the technomagical engineering of, of technomagical engineering. Titan Strike was designed by a keep by Keeper Memoron, a Titanic watcher and brilliant inventor. Securely housed in the heart of the rifle, a relic known as the Thunder Spark powers Titan Strike, harnessing the essence of storms and focusing it into concentrated blasts of energy. The rifle's power source can also be uh, credited to Mimron, who devised it for his comrade Keeper Thorm in ages past. And so I, I'm assuming that like you're going to probably be able to change it. I don't know if you're going to be able to change this into a bow, right? But it does look really, really cool. It's got some little horns on it and the alternate uh, version you can get. So maybe it's going to shoot like little lightning bolts, kind of. I think it looks pretty nice. Marksman gets uh, Thastora, uh, the legacy of the Windrunners, and so that's uh, Sylvanas' family as well as Illyria and I think Valyria. Um, I think all three of them are, are Valyria, I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, uh, proud heirloom to the Windrunner family, <coughs> of the Windrunner family. Thastora was cr uh, carved from a ball um, if, of the mother tree of Eversong Woods shortly after the Elven Kingdom of Quel'Thalas was founded. Handed down from to the eldest of each generation, the bow was last wielded by the High Elf Ranger Captain Illyria Windrunner. And so she's going to be coming back in Legion. What a coincidence that you're going to be getting her bow. It disappeared long with the uh, with its owners following the destruction of the Orcs' homeworld Draenor and the subsequent formation of Outland. And so uh, obviously this one looks really nice. It reminds me a lot of the bows that you see in Sunwell, which are probably some of the coolest bows in the game. Survival is going to be getting Talon Claw Spear of the Wild Gods. The High Mountain Torn crafted this spear, which predates the first demonic invasion of Azeroth more than 10,000 years ago. Talon Claw's wielders have fought alongside many guardian animal spirits, known as the Ancients, to defend the world of Azeroth and its wildlife in particular. Over the millennia, these Ancients have bestowed their blessings on the weapon, imbuing it with a portion of their power. Look at that. I mean, you poke somebody with that, it probably hurt like hell. And like you look at see that that one at the bottom there is like little wolf head. Oh my god, that's awesome! I almost I just want to poke somebody with that right now. Alrighty, let's go ahead and we'll look at the mage stuff. Uh, mage stuff. I mean, these these got to be good, right? I, I already know about one of them. And so arcane, arcane's gonna be getting. Aluneth, uh, uh, Great Staff of the Magna. Aluneth was most notably wielded by for a time by Aegwyn, and uh, Aegwyn is uh, the only female guardian of Trisfall, and that's also Medivh's mother. Uh, although stories indicate that it's far older than she, she is said to have found the staff roughly a century after she took up the mantle of guardian, and to have wielded Aluneth in many battles against the Burning Legion. Several years be before relinquishing her title, she retired the staff, but uh, none know where she might have sort of... Well, I mean, that's obviously not true because you're going to be able to get it. So, I mean, you're going to know. Uh, all right, Fire is going to get be getting Fellow Malorn. Uh, Fellow Malorn, <coughs> Flame Strike in its native tongue. Fellow Malorn was born into battle by mass by members of the Sunstrider family. Uh, so that's uh, Kael Thalas Sunstrider. And I think this is wielded by his father, um, an Assyrian Sunstrider, I believe. Uh, uh, members of the Sunstrider family... Uh, 
as they proved their valor in the War of the Ancients during the Troll Wars and against the Death Knight Arthas Minithil. After it was destroyed, Prince Kael'thas Sunstrider reforged the sword to be even stronger <clears throat> and used it against the Lich King. Where the fuck was he? I don't even remember him. Like, he's just sitting in his castle, not dropping ashes of war. What? I never saw him in ICC. Well, forget about that. Trading several blows with the demonic runeblade Frostmourne. Ultimately, Kael'thas was forced to retreat, and the sword was lost in the frigid wastes of Northrend. Well, I guess, I guess maybe that, I guess, not talking about a different time. Because I, I don't remember seeing uh, Kale Thoss anywhere in ICC. Frost is going to be getting Ebon Shell, and uh, the Great Staff was wielded by Elodi, the first guardian of Trisfall. He bore this staff into many battles against the Legion forces for the century in which he served as guardian, then stepped down from the role of guardian, but he retained the staff until his, di to, in, uh, until his dying day. Upon his passing, Nakir and Tor stored the staff safely away uh, for fear of what might happen if a lesser mage attempted to wield its power without the ability to control it fully. I can't wait till Thugonomics, you know, level 100, uh, you know, uh, was it, was it going to have to be Frost Mage is going to get this because he, I mean, like you guys know, he's going to definitely be able to handle uh, it, its power for sure. Let's go ahead and look at the monk weapons. Like, I don't even know what the, it's probably going to be a bunch of like panda, probably one, probably one of them is just going to be a beer mug. Okay, let's go ahead and look at these. Brewmaster. Oh shit, there it is, it's right there. What did I tell you guys? I didn't even know that. Uh, Bruno is going to be Fu Fuzan, the Wanderer's Companion. Longer ago, the Titanic Watcher, Keeper Freya. Man, she's been, she's all in all in here. Set out to populate the world with life. She placed one of the first seeds in Pandaria. It grew uh, Zu Fuzan the first, and all of Pandaria's forests descended from it. Before populating the rest of Azeroth, Freya fashioned a walking stick for her travels from one of Fuzan's branches. Eventually, Freya passed her staff to the Draed Serpent Yuan, who later gave it to a cl uniquely clever Hosen. Those are the monkey boys. The Monkey King, as he was called, hung, hung his most prized possessions from his staff, in which he carries to him to this day. That's obviously not true, because you're going to have it. And look at that. It's like got like a, a what's that little, little white thing and then a beer bottle. So this, this monkey definitely has his priorities straight. Miss Weaver is going to be getting Shiwan Staff of the Miss. I think that actually that looks pretty cool. It kind of looks like the uh, actually no, just the original one looks kind of like the uh, the uh, was it the key to the planes. I think it's a. Uh, inscription item. Uh, anyway, uh, during the last Pand Pandaran Emperor's reign, a prophecy arose that a ruthless legion would invade the world of Azeroth and leave it shared. That's crazy because that's actually what's happening now because the expansion called Legion is coming out. Uh, to save his people, Emperor Shaohao embarked on a series of trials, taking with him the ancient staff Shulun. Afterwards, he used his newfound wisdom to become part of the land. He became he made Pandaria into a separate continent and enshrouded it in the mist to protect it. That didn't work. Um, his staff clattered uh, cl was it clattered to the ground where it lay until the monks of Tion Minist of Tion Ministry found it and took it to the terrace of the endless spring for sh safekeeping. That didn't work either because you guys know the Shah fears there. Windwalker is going to be getting Fists of the Heavens. This sounds like a Diablo weapon, which makes sense because they're monks. Uh, thousands of years ago, the, f the famed Tolvier Smith Irmat, not that famed, I didn't even know who he was, crafted a pair of mag magnificent hand blades unsatisfied with his work. Irmat tried to capture the essence of Alakir, the Windlord, to infuse into his blades. Alakir was not amused. <laughs> I mean, you guys know that guy's a real dick. I uh, never drops his mount either. Despite the smith, uh, Alakir poured unspeakable amounts of raw elemental fury into the hand blades. When Irmat attempted to unleash their might, a great vortex sprang up, engulfed the city, and scattered the weapons to the winds. All right, well, you gotta probably have to find those and all them then. That's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and look at. All right, we got it. we're halfway done. Uh, paladins. See what uh, what pal I think we know what a lot of paladins are already. Holy is going to be getting the Silver Hand. As one of the Titanic Watchers, Keeper Tyr bore this weapon in countless battles against the Titan's enemies. When one of his fellow Keepers, Loken, fell to corruption, Tyr and his allies stole the discs of Norganon to investigate the extent of Loken's betrayal. Discovering the theft, 
<clears throat> Loken sent horrific mist, uh, monsters after Tyr's group, but Tyr sacrificed his life to fight the creatures while his comrades escaped with the discs. This hammer was lost with him somewhere beneath the land now named in his honor, Trisfall. And so that's actually a really curious thing because people always talk about like a, uh, you know, it's just supposed to be like an old god. That was like one of the, uh, I guess like the theories that there's something like bad under Trisfall. And so maybe this might flesh out that story a little bit more. And so I'm pretty excited to see that as well. Protection gets Truth Guard. Now that's a real amazing name. <clears throat> the Titanic Watchers, Tyr and Ar Arceus, created this shield with uh, when their comrade Loken fell to corruption. We just talked about him. They gave Truth Guard to Vikral Champion, who used it to expose Loken's treachery. When Tyr and his allies later stole the discs of Norganon and fled, I think I'm, I'm, I'm getting deja vu, the champion stayed behind and held off many of Loken's servant. A desperate Loken sent horrific monsters after Tyr, who fell in combat in the time the Vikral Champion, in time the Vikral Champion migrated to Stormheim, and that's going to be in the Broken Isles. Oh, Oh, yes, yeah, in the Broken Isles. Yeah, yeah. What, what I tell you guys, where the shield was eventually, um, the the pictures in the way. So it's probably it's probably there, right? Uh, Retribution. I think we all know about this one. Is getting the Ashbringer. Um, King Magni Bronzebeard forged the Ashbringer from. <clears throat> Or a piece of crystal purified by the wielders of the holy light. This gave the sword strange light-bearing powers. It was named for its ability to slaughter undead, leaving nothing but ash in its wake. Ashbringer passed through several hands, serving both light and shadow, before it came to the legendary paladin Tyrion Forgering, who used it to shatter the to shatter the Lich King's Runeblade Frostmourne on the top of Ice Crown Citadel. Tyrion has carried Ashbringer with him ever since. Then why do we have it? Um, but anyway, I'm not really sure if, T uh, if uh, Ash Tyrion's going to die and give us Ashbringer. I'm not sure how we're going to end up with this. And uh, it's kind of odd to me that uh, Brett Paladins are going to be getting Ashbringer because, um, you know, Paladins are mostly, like, kind of involved with, like, fighting, de uh, like, the undead rather than demons. And so we're going to see how that turns out as well. Let's go ahead and look at the priest weapons, too. Discipline is going to be getting Light's Wrath. Uh, look at that. This actually looks kind of like Benediction in a way. I don't know. It just kind of does to me a little bit. Obsessed with cl with cleansing the with cleansing undead from a world uh, from the world of Azeroth, the fanatical Starlight Crusade tried to create a second Ashbringer in the form of a staff. However, a Dreadlord who had infiltrated the Order and Dreadlord is by the way a Nazrium. Talking about that earlier. Uh, in Infiltrated the order, intervened, interrupting their efforts and triggering a violent magical explosion. The uh, damaged staff's power proved nearly uncontrollable. After several wielders tried and failed to use the staff safely, the elite magi, uh, magi of the Kirin Tor hid it away, lest unleash further deadly calamities. Man, these Kirin Tor guys, look at that. See, they lost Elodi and now they've lost Light's Wrath. Man, these guys are really fucking up. Okay, uh, the holy, uh, we're going to be getting Tearer, uh, Tearer, I don't know how to say that, Beacon of the Naru. As uh, beings of holy light, the benevolent Naru rescued the Draenei from their home world after most of its people were transformed into demonic recruits for the Burning Legion. That's not good. Demons nearly overwhelmed the fleeing Draenei, but the Naru protected the refugees with this beacon crystal. Tearer? I guess, uh, channels the light essence into healing radiance, regenerating horrific runes and bringing people back from the brink of death. Ultimately, the crystal was lost to Legion forces on an invaded world, and it hasn't been seen since. So apparently, we're going to be we're going to be seeing it. I think that looks really really cool, especially that alternate uh, thing, like right right below the text, looks really really cool. Shadow is going to be getting Zal Zalteth, Blade of the Black Empire. It looks like a one-handed weapon, so that's a little bit interesting. I don't know what his other hand's going to be doing. Maybe like jacking himself off while he's doing so much fucking damage. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about this. This terrifying dagger was made from the claw of an old god, Aeon ago and dark priests used it for ritual sacrifices during the height of the black empire never heard about that after the fall of the old god Zalatath was hidden away by cults it surfaced um, from time to time over the course of history inevitably associated with after with some horrific ritual or disaster the blade has a will of its own apparently not because you're going to be using it and uses powerful void energies and mind magics to warp everything around it to some nefarious purpose so that sounds actually that's look at that i don't even know if i want that one okay let's go look at uh let's see where we're at rogues you want four more see uh rogues actually got a revamp with uh what the what the specs are called 
Um, assassination is uh, the same. Uh, outlaw is going to be combat. And subtlety is, uh, people are saying that's also thief. I'm not really sure. Um, I, I think like thief and subtlety are pretty much interchangeable at this point. So just so you guys can understand uh, what's going on here. Assassination is getting anguish and sorrow. The orc warlock Goldan had these daggers made for his personal assassin Garona. These, the blades are said to drink blood and inflict traceless poison leaving little sign of their grim work the perfect tools for an assassin she used them to carry out countless atrocities while under Gul'dan's control <clears throat> including the murder of Stormwind's King Lane whom she befriended we're going to see that in the movie uh, pretty soon here too afterwards in anguish she asked the trusted ally Mural Winterstorm to help her hide the blades away in the hope that they'd never have to be used again well that didn't work okay outlaw is going to be getting, y'all, this is like a really good name, the Dreadblades, okay, and they're called Fate and Fortune. I like, like, sometimes it's like they, you know, like none of these like crazy weird names, just the Dreadblades, okay? I, I kind of like that a little bit. Shortly after the Cataclysm, Admiral Elzia, uh, Elza, uh, Elsa, you know, whatever, we'll just let it go. Goreblade uh, discovered a pair of ornately crafted cutlasses inside a re recently unearthed wreck not uh, far from Booty Bay. Through the origins of the the or, though the origins of the blades are unclear, their power was not. As Elsa was qu quickly made her name known, pillaging countless ships across the Great Sea, none able to best her in combat. Rumors spread among pirates and sailors about the Dreadblades, the most common ones all agreeing that they are cursed and that if they should ever what and that if they ever should stop being fed new victims, they'll claim their owner instead. I guess that's what happened because you're going to have them. I guess that's not good if you're a rogue and you I guess, stop playing your character, though. Subtlety or the thief spec. I'm not really sure. They say subtlety. They say thief up at the top. Who knows? I was getting fangs of the devourer. Gorma the Devourer, uh, <coughs> Sargeras' personal hound. I guess that's, um, you know, basically like Cer uh, Cerberus. Uh, claimed countless lives before it was eventually ambushed and killed on another world long ago. Following the Hound's death, Mesteroth uh, had its fangs crafted into two powerful daggers that, that, and st that still carried with them some of the potent withering essence that made Gor Gormaz bite so deadly. These daggers were passed to Ak Akari, one of Sargaris' most deadly assassins who wields them to this day. Uh, that's a, it's a, a war grant. It doesn't look like Akari. It's weird that he'd be, have a wargren as like one of his assassins. I guess it must be, you know, it's another continuity thing. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the shaman weapons. Uh, Elemental is going to be the Fist of Raw Din. I like that. You know, like, actually it looks cool as hell too. Amon Thul, the High Father, leader of the Titan Pantheon, entrusted his greatest servant, High Keeper Ra, with this artifact, which could channel the fury of the storm. So that trust was, trust was obviously misplaced because... He doesn't have that anymore. You do. Ra used it, used it to bestow life on the Titan Forge Mogu race and wield him. Yeah, what a mistake. And he wielded it in battle against the Black Empire for years beyond counting. Later lost to Ra, the weapon was ultimately recovered by the August Celestial's win, who uh, saw its immense and dangerous power and chose to safeguard it until someone worthy could take up the weapon in a righteous cause once again. I guess that's you. Enhancement, sorry, is going to be getting the Doom Hammer. Now, I'm not sure really how this is going to work because you got like two weapons, right? So, are they both the Doom Hammer? Is it like the Doom Hammer 1, Doom Hammer 2? Break them in half, who fuck knows. So Doomhammer uh, forged an elemental lava on the orc home world of Draenor. This massive hammer is connected deeply with the elements, and its true power is only awakened in the hands of those who can speak to the elements in kind. The Doomhammer was, uh, was long wielded by Orgrim Doomhammer, one of the greatest orc warriors of the Horde, and now rests with Thrall, one of the most powerful shaman Azeroth has ever known. And I think that's kind of odd that, um, I guess like Thrall is like more of a neutral character, Character, but I mean, Thrall is obviously very uh, heavily, um, I guess, like associated with the Horde. So, like, Alliance are going to be using Doomhammer. I, I know there are some people who are a little bit butthurt about that. Anyway, Restoration, Scepter of Ashar. Uh, I, yeah, I guess since we're, we're going to be seeing her uh, probably quite a bit in Legion, a powerful Scepter created by the Queen of Shar long ago before her transformation into a Naga. 
The scepter, the scepter swirls with waters from the well of eternity prior to its corruption, granting the scepter great magical and restorative powers. That's good because your restoration. The scepter, a sh scepter of Ashara was lost during the, dur during the War of the Ancients, shortly before Ashara, and many of her followers were swallowed by the sea. Taken, I mean, how are you going to get them? I mean, you're not going to. How are you going to get swallowed by the sea? Whatever. Uh, taken up by the surviving night elves who knew nothing of the power it truly held, it was buried with an un known priestess in the family tomb in Azuna waiting to be discovered by someone who could unlock its true potential as someone is probably going to be a restoration shaman <coughs> looks pretty cool there I'm wondering how uh, how that shield there plays into it as well let's go ahead and look at the warlock stuff this should be awesome for sure uh, let's see I think all the, uh, the, uh, the specs are pretty much the same uh, no changes there affliction is going to be getting alt 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 lash the the Dead Wind Harvester. Uh, I don't like that. See, that looks badass, right? Um, the first Necrolite to walk the world of Azeroth, Satafel, was given the scythe by the Titan Sargeras himself. It grows in power as it draws souls from, a vic from its victims. The Harvester earned its name as, as Satafel methodically drained all of the life, drained all life from the hapless inhabitants of Dead Wind Pass, creating a potent magical nexus there in the process, hunting down Satiel, the guardian of Trisfall, turned a scythe on her, sending her soul to join those, uh, those of her victims. Eventually, the Dark Riders recovered the weapon and secreted, uh, and secreted? Is that even, is that a verb? See, I guess, secreted behind, beneath the Tower of Kyrazan, and so there's going to be another reason <coughs> for people to explore the, um, the Kyrazan crypts, which is pretty cool. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, the demonology is going to be getting Skull of the Minari. Before the Iridar served the, site, the Titan Sargeras, one of their greatest leaders, Thakiel, had unprecedented skill with summoning and binding magics. Driven by ambition, he, re he reached into the void and was answered with knowledge of dark creatures unlike any the Iridar had seen before. His audacious power grab infuriated the demon Lord Archimonde, who struck him down and then had his soul gilded and placed on a display as a warning. <laughs> Uh, today, the Dreadlord Messeroth, or I heard about him before, uses it to enhance his ability to summon and command the demon, uh, command demon armies for the Legion. So I guess we're going to have to kill Messeroth or whatever his name is. Destruction, I like this one a lot. I was reading this one earlier. Is getting the Scepter of Sargeras. <clears throat> Created through an incredible effort by the uh, hundreds of Sargeras' servants, the Scepter can rip, and, rip open dimensional gateways between worlds. It was entombed beneath the sea for centuries, then used by Orc Shaman Nurzul to open portals that tore the world of Draenor apart, leaving behind the shattered realm of Outland. The scepter was finally secured by the elite Magi of the Kirin. So this is like, what are we, I mean, we're going for a hat trick here. They fucked up three times. Like, we got this one. I don't even remember the other two, but this is three times. They, they messed this up. It will get, let somebody get the staff that they're not supposed to have. Unable to destroy it, they hid it away in magically protected chamber. That sounds real familiar, doesn't it? And put it under eternal watch to prevent it from ever being used again. Yeah, these guys, wow. Jeez, what a joke. Okay, now we're going to get down to the... We left the best for last, of course. We're going to be getting down to the warrior, uh, warrior weapons here. Uh, <clears throat> I was wrong. I was wrong. I expected that we were going to be getting Shalomane, uh, maybe Gorhal, or maybe Broxigar's Axe. Um, none of the three. Arms is going to be getting Stromkar, the Warbreaker. This greatsword was born into combat by a barbarian warlord who first united humanity under a single banner, founding the nation of Arathor, as the Arathi Highlands, but, you know, it's like related. A master tactician and strategist, King Thoradin went on to play a critical role in ending the Troll Wars. Later, the sword was lost while it was being used to subdue a Cathraxi monstrosity in the Forgotten Tomb beneath Trisfall. And I guess that's the Tomb of Tyr. I'm not sure, because uh, we were talking about that earlier. Abandoned and uh, all but forgotten, Stromkar has been slowly drinking from the shadowy power over their thousand, there, there over thousands of years. So uh, honestly, like I was kind of surprised that we're going to be getting this weapon, but uh, I, I think that I'm, I'm waiting to see what the other skins are going to be. I think that the uh, the red one there looks really cool. Not a huge fan of the yellow one though. Fury is going to be getting the War Swords of Valajar. In ages, in ages past, uh, the Titanic Watcher Keeper Odin betrayed his the sorceress Hel Helnia. 
killing her and, and twisted twisted her spirit into a spectral valkyr he forged his twin this this pair of twin swords f for the mightiest of his storm stormforge valajar this is just so many weird words but helenia stole the swords and infused them with a portion of her rage she then gave gave them to her own champion who used them to hunt the greatest heroes and drag their souls away to serve in Helheim. I guess that's the best because that's like her house or something like that. These swords stir their owners their owner into unrelenting and punishing attacks that overcome a target's defenses and leave no opening for counterattacks. I like that because I'm a warrior. Uh, quick thing here, uh, they look like one-handed weapons. I'm not sure. I don't think they're going to be getting rid of Titan's Grip. Maybe uh, there's going to be a talent that you're going to get within like the talent tree of the weapons. I find it unlikely that they're going to get rid of Titan's Grip, and I really hope that they don't, but I don't really know what's going to happen either way. So no real point talking about it, honestly. Um, protection is going to be getting Scale of the Earth Warder, which is, by the way, Deathwing. The imp impenetrable shield created from a scale of the Black Dragon aspect, Nethalarion, the Earth Warder, which is again Deathwing, before the Old God's corruption overcame him. The formidable Vikral King Magnar Icebringer carried this shield into combat and won victory after victory in the face of grim odds. When he finally fell in battle, it was due to treachery by servants of the Valnir Helnia. She has bitches just causing trouble all over the place. The shield is now entombed with King Magnar's body in the path of kings in Stormheim. So we're going to be getting a lot of stuff out of Stormheim. Honestly, guys, uh, I think that's a pretty cool weapon I'm looking at. It looks pretty nice. Uh, I'm very curious to see a lot of the different skins that are going to come out of this and what those are going to look like as well. So anyway, those are all of the different artifacts. Uh... One thing that I find odd is that some artifacts are just like entrenched in lore. You know, you've got like Doomhammer, um, Ashbringer, even Elodi, um, not Elodi, uh, Ebon Chill, Elodi Staff, and a couple of other things that are just like kind of very core elements of Warcraft. And then you have other things that you haven't really ever heard about before. And so like kind of like this weapon here and, uh, you know, the, the Fury weapons, you don't really have never heard of them. Same with the, uh, the Rogue ones. And so it's kind of odd how some of them are very, very entrenched in lore and some of them are kind of out of nowhere. I kind of wished it would have done one or the other, but I'm just glad, and I, I hope that it's going to turn out as good as possible. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed looking and uh, going through all the different artifact weapons with me, and uh, that's pretty much all I got. So thanks for watching, and like, comment, subscribe.